Buffer capacity are sometimes called buffer efficiency, buffer index, or buffer value. What's the meaning of that? It's the meaning how much your buffer system going to resist the change in the pH. And it can be calculated by knowing the amount of adding acid or base divided by the change in the pH resulting from that additions. According to that, we can say, for example, we have an... Uh, phosphate buffer as a strong buffer it's a good buffer capacity and we have a bicarbonate buffer that is mean weak buffer the weak buffer capacity what's the difference of that that means the phosphoric acid buffer can resist the higher change in the acid you keep adding acid and the pH change is still small keep adding acid the pH change is still small while when you have a bicarbonate buffer a small addition of acid going to destroy your buffer system so that is the meaning of buffer capacity how we can calculate the buffer capacity if, for example if we take the acetate buffer that's having equal amount of sodium acetate and acetic acid of 0.1 mole to this system we adding an AOH by the concentration of 0.01 mole so we're adding a small amount of NaOH we're adding a base we expect it to have changing by increasing the pH how we calculate the buffer capacity we calculate it by the following we should first know what's going to NaOH due to the equilibrium of acetic acid and sodium acetate the NaOH is going to react with the acetic acid to form um, sodium acetate so what is going to happen is going to take from the concentration of the acid and convert it into the salt of the sodium acetate. That's why the henderson hasselbalch equation for the buffer would be equal to pH equal to pKa plus logarithm. The salt plus the additional base concentrations divided by the acid minus the additional base concentration. If we adding HCl, the process would be the reverse. Why? Because the, what will happen with the HCl? It will not react like an NOH with the acid. It would be the reverse. It's going to add to the acid and taking from the acetate base. So the equation, if you add an acid, pH equal to pKa plus logarithm salt minus the acid divided by acid plus the additional acids. The neutralization curve. Sometimes we have some question about the neutralization curve. In the neutralization curve, you have two x's. The y axis representing the pH, and the x axis representing the adding amount. Here we're going to talk about the neutralization curve of strong acids and weak acid against the NaOH. So what will happen if we starting to add a small milliliter? of 0.1 normal NaOH to solution of HCl. The neutralization of HCl plus NaOH going to give H2O plus NaCl. So the solution of HCl starting with very low pH, addition few drops going to have rapid increase at neutralization point. You can as see this at pH 7 and then we have just excess base. So we have this uh, S shape curve for the NaOH against the HCl. While the case of acetic acid is a little bit different, as you can see, the increase is not similar to that of the HCl. The main reason for that in this area, the NaCl is going, the NaOH going to react with the acetic acid to form sodium acetate. And if we have acetic acid and sodium acetate, what is this? So this is a buffer system. It's going to resist the change of additional NaOH until all the buffer capacity is ended. And here we will have a rapid increase as we have just an excess of NaOH. And this is the neutralization curve of weak and strong electrolytes against the addition of NaOH. Buffer in biological system, we're going to start with the buffers that are present in the blood. The blood's maintaining pH at 7.4 and we have a primary buffer system in the blood that's resulting from plasma and secondary buffer system of blood that result from the RBCs.
First of all, the plasma. What is the buffer in the plasma? Mainly it's carbonic acid and bicarbonate, and also the acid alkali salt of phosphoric acid and the plasma proteins. What is the buffer in the erythrocyte? The RBCs, the also two buffer system, either hemoglobin, oxyhemoglobin, and acid alkali potassium salt of phosphoric acid. It's very dangerous to have uh, extremely low or extremely high pH, can result in the death of uh, your subject if you have this difference in the pH for example if the pH and the diabetic coma you you know diabetes diabetes is mean a uh, highly blood glucose level sometimes it's become very high the pair then enter in state of what is called coma that we have excess of ketone body excess of acidity so the pH would be as low as 6.8 and when it's below 6.8 or above 7.8 is life-threatening condition and that's why most of pharmaceutical formulation intended for direct administration into the blood have a buffer system to maintain the pH similar to that of the blood, like 7.4, or within this range from 6.9 to 7.8, in order to uh, prevent any change in the pH by your administration. Other biological system that have a buffer is the lacrimal fluid or the tears, the demo. It have a great buffer capacity. The pH range similar to that of the blood is 7.4, ranging from 7 to 8. Uh, the lacrimal fluid can change, can resist the dilution 15 times without significant changing in the pH. That means the dilution value is higher than that of the buffer capacity. For urine. It also have a biological buffer, but it's a weak buffer. It's ranging from 4.5 to 7.8, even sometimes higher than that. When we have a pH below 4.5, what's that meaning? From pathological point of view, when we have pH below 4.5, that means the kidney is secreting more acid parts, more hydrogen ion concentration. While if we have the pH of urine more than 7.8, from pathological point of view, that means the kidney is keeping the acid inside the body, is preventing the excretion of excess acids. And this is have its own application, as you can see from the urine analysis paper. If you have any patient, a uh, relative patient having a urine analysis, you they will have to specify this. It does it have acidic urine or a basic urine? So each one of them has its own indication about the pathology behind the patient problem. Some application to pharmaceutical buffers. First of all, formulation of ophthalmic solutions, formulation of any injectable solutions, formulation of liquid preparations. All of these need to add pharmaceutical buffer, but in the eye and in the IV administration is very, very important because it is life-threatening conditions. Also, another one, colorimetric determination of pH, as we said about the pH indicators. Research study, when you have to fix the pH at a specific value, for example, you want to study your drug stability at a pH of 4. So you need to make a buffer, strong buffer, that keep the pH 4, and you monitor the stability of that drug. There are different types of pharmaceutical buffers. Uh, some of them are listed in pharmacopoeia. They can be used with or without isotonicity contributors, the NACL. And the first one is boric acid with monohydrate sodium bicarbonate. It can give you the pH range from 5 to 9. The difference in the pH is depending on the how much you're using from the acids and the bay and the salt one. Mixture of the salt of sodium phosphate, this is also a type of buffer, greatly used. There are so many using for phosphate buffer, but again, you, it can be only efficient from pH 6 to 8. Boric acid and sodium borate come from 7 to 9, and an AOH with KH2PO4, it's ranging from 5.8 to 8, again, depending on the concentration of both of the agents. Some application for the buffer and buffer capacity and their effect on the tissue rotation. First of all, eye rotation. It's usually resulted from the presence of a free form of the drug at physiological pH. 
and it is more often due to the acidity of the eye solution. So if we have the free form of the drug, autosological pH, that can cause the eye irritation. As we said about the parental solutions, we usually need to buffer them, but always the buffer of this solution should be similar to the uh, human body pH. If it is not similar to the human body, it needs to be buffered at very low capacity, so or at even no buffer system, in order to give the ability to our blood system, to our circulation, to bring the pH of your formulation to the pH of your system. So, if you have to prepare a um, solution for the IV administration and it was necessary to you to maintain the pH away from the biological system you need to use buffer with a low capacity in order to allow the blood to bring the buffer back to this one some uh, maybe someone is going to ask why we even use a buffer why we not just using non-buffer system? We mainly using the buffer to improve the stability of our drugs. Most of the times, st our drugs are not very stable. That's why we need to adjust the pH to make them stable. So if it is, if we can get a stable uh, pH. Uh, away from the blood pH, we need to make it as buffer with low capacity. That can be easily modified by the blood and bring it back to the human body pH. For oral administration, so we have so many drugs affected by the buffer system. One of them is aspirin, the acetyl salicylic acid, that it's found to be absorbed more rapidly in the system buffered at low buffer capacity and from the system containing no buffer or highly buffered preparation and gastric irritation is also affected by the buffer capacity for in the case of aspirin. Aspirin is acidic drug. As we said previously, for acidic drug to be absorbed, it should be in the unionized form. So we need to maintain aspirin in the unionized form. If it is converting to ionized, it will become soluble, but it will have difficult for the absorption. But again, if it is become in the unionized and become for long time in contact with the tissue, it can cause irritation. So we need to have a balance between all of these information for each molecule. Stability versus optimal therapeutic response, as we said previously, the undissociated part of the drugs, either acidic or basic drug, is highly preferred because it is highly, highly therapeutic activity. It can be absorbed through the biological membranes. F, and here we will talk about certain examples to understand the problem. Okay, we have ophthalmic drug called pilocarbine. Pilocarbine is a basic drug having BKB of 7.15. So it's a basic drug. What do you think about the absorption and activity? Where it's going to happen? Is the pH basic or pH acidic? So it is basic. When the pH is basic, it means in the undissociated form, that means in absorbable form and therapeutic form. But if it is in acidic, it would be in the ionized form, that means in and dissociated form, that is, cannot be or even slowly absorbed form. Uh, and for the bilocarbine, for example, in the pH of the tears, as we say, how much the pH of the tear is 7.4. That means it is still basic one. So what is the predominant part of the bilocarbine? It would be an ionized basic form that is easily to be absorbed. But at the same time, it can cause some irritation to the eye. And then, what happens if the pH of the eye become 4? When it's become 4, the drug gets converted into ionized, that is, cannot or may be slowly absorbed. Here we have a mathematical example about what we said previously. If the BKB of bilocarbine is 7.5, compute the more percent of a free base, free base, a present at a pH of 7.4. So, direct application to henderson hasselbach equation for a buffer of uh, base and conjugated acid buffer. And finally, as you can see here, we get the mole percent of the base is 78. 78 percent, what's that mean? That mean at the pH of 7.4, which is the pH of the tear, we have 78% of the drug present in the undissociated bilocarbine form. 
and that is optimal because in this form it's very good for the absorption sometimes we need to try to compromise the pH that we're going to use in order to reduce the irritation that's caused by the uh, directly a high amount of the undissociated form for example why we are not increasing the pH of the solution until we get 100% of the drug in the uh, base form in this case we have all the bilocarbine in the base form so all bilocarbine would be effective all bilocarbine is going to be absorbed but in the same time in this case we have all the bilocarbine cause irritation and this is, should be avoided. That's why we try to compromise one select a pH that gives a sufficient amount of bilocarbine to be absorbed, but without the irritation effect. Thank you very much for your attention. Please feel free to write your question in the Google Classroom so I can uh, try to help you uh, solving any conflicted point maybe you have regarding this very important lecture this lecture will be my last lecture with you in this semester i'm hoping to meet you the next semester with the physical pharmacy part thanks again and goodbye